One of the most common topics in all of GMAT and GRE is prime factorization. The question is often hidden and it won't tell you explicitly to use prime factorization, but you'll have to. The number of students who can actually use it properly and know all of the tricks and shortcuts is very small. And that's what this quick video is about. By the time you've watched it to the end, you'll know my favorite tricks and shortcuts for prime factorization. If you learn anything from this video, please leave a like and a comment. It would be much appreciated. Let's get to the learning. Before I show you the tricks of prime factorization, let me clarify that there's a big difference between a prime factor and a factor. Look at the example on the screen. 12 has six unique factors. A factor is simply a number that goes into 12 without any remainder. The way I would find each factor is to do them in pairs. 1 times 12 is 12, so 1 and 12 are factors. 2 times 6 is 12, so 2 and 6 are factors, and 4 times 3. So those are the 6 factors of 12. But what about the prime factors? 12 has just 2 prime factors, 2 and 3. And to show this, we're going to do a prime factorization tree. If we break 12 down into 6 times 2, we are not done prime factorizing because 6 is not a prime number. 2 is, so I've put it in bold. You can circle it on your page. 6 breaks down as 3 times 2, and 3 and 2 are both primes. You might say, don't we have 3 prime factors because we've got 2 twice? No, we have two prime factors, three and two. We have multiple twos, but essentially we have two unique prime factors, three and two. Now let's get on to why prime factorization is useful, because I know what you're thinking. Cool fact, Philip, but how am I going to use this in the exam? I'm going to use an official question to demonstrate. This question says, if an integer is divisible by both eight and 15, then the integer must also be divisible by which of the following. Notice some of the words that come up for which prime factorization is useful. Divisibility, factor, multiple. Those are hints that prime factorization is going to be useful, although it's useful in many situations. When I see the number 8 and 15, I don't see an 8 and a 15. I see those numbers in their broken down prime factored form. I encourage you to as well. As I've written down there, think ingredients. Don't see an eight. See two cubed, two times two times two. Speaking of which, rather than break it down as two times four and four is two times two, with practice, you'll start to do shortcuts. If you know all the square numbers off by heart, up to 15, and all the cube numbers off by heart, up to six, it just helps to speed things up. So eight, we should know is two cubed, saves a lot of time. So I don't see an eight, I just see three twos. What about 15? 15 is of course three times five, and both of those numbers are primes. So if an integer is divisible by both eight and 15, I don't think of the 15 times tables or the eight times tables. I just think to myself, oh, what you're trying to tell me is that the integer is divisible by three twos, two cubed, a three and a five. Or in even simpler terms, that integer must have the ingredients of a five, a three, and three twos. So we know it has those ingredients, but does it have enough ingredients to make the next five recipes that you see on the screen? Can we make a 16 with those ingredients? And the answer is no. I didn't have to, but I've broken down each of the five numbers they've given us. Of course, we wouldn't have to do this in the test because as soon as we've found the right answer, we could just stop. But just to demonstrate, I've broken down each of those five numbers. Look at the 16. 16, if you break it down, is two to the power of four. So 16 has four twos as its ingredients. But our number, our mystery number, only has three twos guaranteed. It might have more, but we only know for sure that it's got three twos. 
Therefore, we can't guarantee that we have enough ingredients to make 16, because 16 has four twos. What about 24? Well, 24, which I've broken down, has three twos and a three. Does our mystery number have those ingredients? Yes, it does. We know we've got three twos because we're divisible by eight. And we know we've got a three because we're divisible by 15. Therefore, we're definitely divisible by 24, which is just comprised of three twos and a three. So that's the correct answer, B, because we know we have all the ingredients necessary to make 24. Quick demonstration, a number like 32 is wrong because it has five twos and we can't guarantee having five twos. 36 is wrong because it's got two threes and we can only guarantee that we've got one three. And 45 has two threes again and we can only guarantee that we've got one three. Notice the word must in the question. Because it was a must, we must be able to guarantee having enough ingredients. It's not just whether it's possible. Our integer might possibly be divisible by all five of those numbers, but we can only guarantee that it's divisible by B, 24. I want to get onto another amazing reason why prime factorization is useful, and that is to count the number of factors that a number has. Not many people know this trick, but it's one of my favorites. So let's check it out. How many factors does 999 have? A question like this came up in my GMAT test, but it could also come up in a GRE test. You've got the cooking instructions down below, but I'm gonna demonstrate as we go and briefly explain why it works at the end. Finding out how many factors 999 has might seem a huge challenge. We'd have to pick so many numbers and maybe do long division to see if they go in. But no, I come bearing good news. We use prime factorization to break the number down and then we use the following trick. Breaking down 999, you would first spot that nine goes into it. That to me is the most obvious one. And then we're left with 111. Now you might not think of a number immediately that goes into 111, but think that the digits add up to three. And any number whose digits add up to a multiple of three must be divisible by three. If you didn't know that, you can take notes. One plus one plus one is three, so we know 111 is divisible by three. You could use long division, therefore, to break it down and find out that 111 is three times 37. Of course, nine is simply three squared. So 111 is three times 37. Now, 37 is a prime number. You can check that by dividing 37 by some primes. Don't bother dividing it by four or six, only by the primes. That's the way to check if it's prime. It's not divisible by two. It's not divisible by three, because its digits add up to 10. Not divisible by five, and not divisible by seven. In fact, we don't need to check the primes whose square are bigger than the number itself. Anyway, that's a separate story for another day, but suffice to say, to check if 37 is prime, only check if it's divisible by prime numbers. If 37 is not divisible by two and three, it's not gonna be divisible by six, so no need to check the non-prime numbers. Anyway, we have prime factorized 999. Now we need to write it in a professional format. So we gather together the threes and the 37. There are three threes, and 137, so we write it like that. The trick is as follows. We add one to each of the exponents, so that three becomes a four, the one becomes a two, and then you simply multiply those results. Four times two equals eight. So 999 has eight factors. You don't need to know the next bit, why it works. I'll quickly demonstrate for those who are curious. Basically, each of those numbers, three cubed and 37 to the one, has one more iteration than you would believe. So three cubed could come in four different ways. Three to the power of zero, three to the power of one, three to the power of two, three to the power of three. The zero adds one further way. 37 isn't just 37 to the power of one, it could be 37 to the power of zero. And any combination of those four numbers on the left with those two numbers on the right will produce a unique factor of 999. 
And that's why we add one to the exponent and then multiply to find the number of factors. Again, you don't need to know why it works, but you do need to know the cooking instructions as I've written down below. Before we finish, I wanted to do one last question that comes up a lot in the GMAT and GRE, for which we're gonna need a really handy shortcut, which if you don't know, life gets a lot tougher. Here is the question, and I'm about to show you the shortcut. I've pasted in here a little note from the ETS guide, which I think is not very helpful. They give an example of prime factorization as 800 equals 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 5, 5. But like, you're kind of encouraging students just to divide it by 2, then divide it by 2 again, then divide it by 2, and that is the really slow way that most students do. I don't want my students to do it that way. By the way, why would we think prime factorization for this question? 2 to the x times 3 to the y times 5 to the z equals 240,000. Quite simply, because the numbers on the left are in their prime factorized form, and the number on the right is a big juicy number that we can break down. Essentially, they're asking, how many 2s have we got? How many 3s? How many 5s? And we are not going to just keep dividing by 2 or dividing by 3 until we get the answer. No, no. What do we do? Step one, we separate off the zeros. How many zeros are there? There are four zeros. So we split that number into 24 times one with four zeros after it. That is the first step. Split off the zeros. One with four zeros is of course 10,000. 240,000 is 24 times 10,000. They both have four zeros at the end. Now, why is that such a big shortcut rather than dividing by two? You're about to see 10,000 can be prime factorized in two simple steps. 10,000 is 10 to the power of four. Why? Because there are four zeros. 10,000 is 10 to the power of four. But given that 10 is just two times five, we can break down 10 to the power of 4 as simply 2 to the power of 4 and 5 to the power of 4. 10 to the power of 4 is just 2 to the power of 4 times 5 to the power of 4 because 10 is just 2 times 5. It's always the same. 10 to the power of 5 would be 2 to the power of 5, 5 to the power of 5. 10 to the power of 3 would be 2 to the power of 3 times 5 to the power of 3. Massive shortcut. Imagine how much time we've saved by not dividing by 2 four times and not dividing by 5 four times. A massive amount of time. And now breaking up 24 is simple. 24 is 8 times 3. 8, as you know, is 2 cubed. And 3 is already a prime number. So we have prime factorized without my talking in a matter of about 30 seconds or less when dividing by 2, you would be here for hours. Gathering these numbers together professionally, you can see that we have seven twos, one three, and four fives. By comparing those numbers to the x, y, and z on the left, we can see that x is seven, y is one, and z is four. Adding those up, we have, of course, 12, and that is the answer to the question. But what I wanted you to focus on is how we separated off those zeros to save a massive amount of time. So now, hopefully, at the end of this video, you have learned not only why prime factorization is useful, what a prime factor is, but also the shortcuts to completing prime factorization. Thank you again for watching and see you in the next video.